Hi, this is Phil Constantine, and this is Travels with Phil. In this episode, we're going to be traveling to the Etowah Indian Mounds in northeastern Georgia. Now, this uh, video is going to have a mix between still pictures, my uh, voiceover narrations, and the videos I took live at the scene. It was Archaeology Day the day I was there, May 14, 2016, and this is one of the most important Mississippian uh, sites in the United States. They have a very, very nice uh, museum here, and I highly recommend it if you have a chance to go out there and visit it. One of the things you can see at the very beginning here is a couple of diagrams on how they think the village looked. Here's to the live video. All right, travels with Phil, travels to Etowah, Indian Mounds. This is a uh, diorama, if you want to call it that, of what the area may have looked like. And I'll come over here to the legend, or the explanation of what the uh, each of these things you were just looking at, so that way you can put it on pause. And then outside the window, well, that's the real things right out there. This is archaeology day here today. And the T has got sort of a D sound, Edwa. You are looking at part two here, Travels with Phil, at the Edwa Indian Mounds. Uh, this is part of what they call the defensive uh, moat. This is, uh, some cases, uh, nine to ten feet deep out here. This helped protect the site. They said at one point it uh, covered as much or surrounded as much as 50 acres. And uh, zoom out just a little bit here. Be a little bit less shaky that way. And so they actually had a moat surrounding the thing. By the way, uh, I got in free today because I'm Cherokee. Hey, finally paid off. And I got in free because the Cherokee Nation helps support this site. Now, the surrounding area on the inside of the moat, they think they had like 12 foot tall post in the ground, sharpened post on the top, or palisades, and this was uh, sometime around seven, uh, 1325 and may have been burned in the 1350s, give or take a little bit. And this talks a little bit about the village that was going on, uh, how many people were living there, uh, anywhere from a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand. This is Mound Day that you're seeing there in the diff uh, distance. Now there are two plazas. And overall, there are six mounds. Now, these are some of the stairways they actually found. Uh, that is, this is Mound A that you're looking at from the ground level here. And it's about 65 uh, feet high. And it uh, had uh, maybe um, um, four structures on top at one time or another. Now, this is a view from up on top and a, a panoramic view as well. Now, we'll take you back to the video I recorded when I was there. Travels with Phil, video number four. Boy, the wind is blowing up here on the top. But you can see how big this place is. That's Mount B and that's Mount C. You can't obviously hear a lot of what I'm saying because the wind is so loud. More mounds from that here in front. The protection ditch runs around the edge of the plaza. And the power plant in the distance. The power plant in the distance. It seems a little out of place, but it's good. Yeah, the wind did feel good up there. All right, so you're looking at part of Mound C, and this is Mound B, just off of Mound A. They're obviously nowhere near as large or as tall uh, as Mound A, which is where they think the uh, chieftain or the head people or the priest perhaps uh, lived up on top of the, this particular mound. And uh, it's, it's a little bit of a walk to get up there. I mean, it's not a major operation, but, uh, you know, if you're uh, feeble or in a wheelchair, you're not going to be able to make it. No offense intended for being feeble, just not very strong. And uh, looking around, uh, this is the main plaza, and this is over on Mound B. Uh, that was built somewhere this around... Mound B, in the distance, where you see the lady walking, that's Mound C. And then the very large Mound A, right inside. And then this would be the plaza, out there in the distance. Mount B was built somewhere between 1100 and 1200. Mount A was started around 1000, give or take. Don't know how long it took. That's the Etowah River in the distance out there. I'll have more on that in just a bit here. And looking over at Mount C, these are the uh, ramps or, st or the stairs uh, built by the, uh, uh, the State Park Department. Uh, they think this might have been a mortuary, but they found all kinds of artifacts in Mount C. You can see the river right here by the edge of the back edge of Mound B. Zoom in a little bit. There you go. There's the river. Zoom out. Turn around a little bit. There's Mount C. 
and again the much larger Mound Day which does have a little side platform there must have been for maintenance just kidding and the southern defense uh, was the Etowa River, which is still there, still flows along very strongly. In fact, as you can see here, it may rise up quickly because of the dam down the road. And back to another uh, video from the day. And the continuing travels with Phil. Let's see if we can zoom in on that tree branch growing along there. There we go. Gives you some idea of how uh, rapidly the Etowa in, uh, River is going here, right along the edge of the base here. And it's actually sort of pretty. You can see. I don't know if that's a bird down there on that log or not. I don't know if I can hold it steady enough. Maybe just a branch and then there's some people camped out there on the far side. You can see the little tent. But this is a very nice, full, nice peaceful scene here along the edge of the Etowa Indian Mounds uh, in Alabama. Very pretty. Very, very highly recommended if you're ever in this area to come by here. It's very, very nice. Not too far from Atlanta, by the way. And we saw some uh, ducks uh, or geese, probably geese, uh, and some kids were having a good time with them. And I thought that was real cute. We just developed a duck crossing here. Or maybe goose crossing. Uh, I like the joy of little children. And uh, they were cute. All right, so looking at the big mounds here. Now, Mound C, they found things from Tennessee, flint from Tennessee, uh, seashells from the uh, uh, Gulf Coast. They found copper from the Great Lakes, and they even found some uh, artifacts, they believe, from when DeSoto visited. DeSoto visited right around 1540, and at that time, the Cherokee were living here. Now, this is a model and uh, a waddle and daub uh, project that was put up, I believe it was in uh, 2008, by uh, some Seminole and Creek uh, construction people. And this was the way that uh, they built houses in those days. Uh, and now the Cherokee lived here at the time that DeSoto De came through, 1500s. Some Cherokees think we were here for a long, long time. We might have built it. Other Cherokees don't. Some historians and anthropologists and uh, histor or, uh, archaeologists don't think this was built by the uh, Cherokees. But uh, again, with lots of things, unless you're there, it's hard to really tell exactly what the circumstances were. Now, we're back in the museum. They have all kinds of uh, overhead views here. They have all kinds of things on display. Very informative information about the general setting, about the time periods about things that they have found here in their excavations. Uh, here's another good map to show you basically where it is, uh, again, a little bit north of Atlanta itself. Uh, they have a display here on when uh, DeSoto came through. They say it was sometime after August 20th, 1540, and that's the, the uh, route that uh, DeSoto and his people took. That's a stone bowl, by the way. And a lot of these things were carved without metal. Now these were copper axes, and then the copper came from the Great Lakes, and then these were stone axes. Uh, that they believe came from the local area. Maybe Tennessee had some of the flint that was involved. And uh, these are gorgets. These are things you wear on a string around your neck and it almost has an Aztec or Mexican feel to it. And there are a lot of folks who believe that we may have come from that general area. Others say we didn't, of course, uh, being Cherokee myself. Now this almost reminds me of a booger mask, which is an old uh, Cherokee masking thing. <clears throat> now these are some of the areas where they're at. Now these are stone effigies. These weigh 125 pounds, and they were found in Mound C. That's what makes the people, the people there think that it might have been a uh, mortuary of some sort. There's just some of the other items there, a matate there, a grinding stone, uh, some of the uh, pottery that would have been a, probably a water jar. You can see some of the stone tools on the left. The uh, top part is, is how wattle and daub was done. You'd weave the... Uh, uh, cane together and then and put mud and grass on either side until it hardened. There's just more of the effigies found in uh, Mound C. Thank you very much for watching. You can leave comments below as long as the uh, language is family friendly. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so by clicking the button on the right. Thanks for watching. Etowah.